Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World. Today we are in one of my favorite cities in the world, or islands in the world, Venice, here in Italy, and its place is shockingly amazing. And today what we have for you are 10 things that shock tourists when they do come here to Venice. And I'm just gonna start with actually shock number zero. Uh, before we even get into it is, you'll be shocked how beautiful it is here. Whether in Piazza San Marco, where you have the Basilica San Marco there, and the, the Doge's Palace there, or, or walking on the Grand Canal and seeing the Rialtos, and the gondolas going by singing. I mean. The the bridges, the, the little islands, the little back alleys. This place is gorgeous when you come here and that's why there's so many tourists that come here and that's the first thing that's really going to shock you when you come here is how many tourists are going to be here when you come to Venice. Look, they have 20 million tourists that come here a year and there's only 50,000 people that live here. That means for the year there's one resident and 4,000 tourists. So you can kind of understand how sometimes the Venetians are like, Hey tourist, what do you want? Maybe not the most friendly outgoing because they're overrun with the tourists. So be ready for that. So there will be lines to get into some of the places and lunchtime, uh, it gets, oh, sometimes you gotta wait to go find lunch and trying to get over the Rialto at busy time, you're like, it's like a, packed in like a sardine. I can see why sardines are popular here because a lot of times with all the tourists you feel like you're a sardine packed in. So, so just do know that, that first shock is just how many tourists do come here. And actually they're talking about maybe limiting the number of tourists that come in because there are so many. Now as a tourist, what's cool is if you come here like I am here in, in November, man this place is pretty empty and you can be lucky with that, but high season and carnival, man it is just packed, 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 okay? So be ready for that. Now the second thing that's going to shock you is the price tag for the gondola. Look, I know, you've seen it in the movies, you've seen the gondola rides and James Bond racing in them and all kinds of stuff. What you have to realize is those gondola rides can be very expensive, like 80 euros, like 100 US dollars for half an hour. Oh, and if you want them to sing, well that might be a little bit more money too. And the honking, that's not singing, okay? That's just honking, okay? And so you will be shocked how expensive it can be when you wanna do those gondola rides. So if you do wanna do one, what I recommend is find some other tourists to go with you to kinda of split the price up because it can be pretty pricey. Now the third shock you'll have when you come here is with all those tourists, you have all the tourist shops selling all the Murano glass or Venetian glass, Murano glass, or the masks that you'll see out there that aren't necessarily made in Italy but other places. You have all these tourist shops and tourist restaurants and with that tourist service because of all the people. Like I said, 4,000 to one, you get kind of tired of the tourists. And then when you look at the service you get at the restaurants, you don't have that typical really friendly over the top Italian fun you hear because they have so many tourists coming in that it's just like, let's just get them in, get them out, because there's gonna be more tourists tomorrow. So you don't get as much of the, the kind of love that I, that you, see, they're like, don't let them know this. You don't get all the love that you usually get in Italy when you go out to eat, when you are here in Venice. So if you do want to have some of that love or try some of the local stuff, get away from the main tourist areas and go and explore a bit farther afield and you can find some more kind of mom and pop restaurants that have some of the local dishes that will be much more enjoyable. And one of the things, if you're looking at some local dishes, one of the things you're gonna drink here, the Spritz Con Apero, which is bubble wine with bubble water and an orange liquor in it, little drink, orange drink you'll see people having. That's a traditional drink to have when you're here. And when you're gonna eat something, you wanna eat something that's really from here, not touristy, it's sardines. Now you're a tourist, you're used to being packed as a sardine, now you can eat them. And there's two dishes I do recommend with the sardines. One for the pasta side, you have bigoli with sardines. And bigoli is this fat pasta noodle you'll have that's here. It's very popular in Veneto. It's really good with the sardine sauce. Fantastic to have. Another thing you want to have is sardine sour, which is, which is sardines that they put in vinegar and onion and let sit to the side for a couple days. It is quite a nice tasty treat. Even if you don't like sardines, you should have it when you are here because that's one of those kind of local things you should try. Now the fourth thing that might shock you when you come here is you will get lost. Yes, you will get lost when you come to Venice, but that's one of the best things about coming to Venice. Walking around, taking the back alleys, going over little bridges, finding new piazzas with kids playing around and, and mom and pop places and grabbing a cafe at some little cafe. And it is such a cool experience getting lost here in Venice. And some people get shocked in a scared way when that happens. Don't be, it's an island. You'll find your way off, okay? <laughs> but really, getting lost here is part of the experience and it is wonderful. So don't be shocked if it happens to you. Do have your map, because if you do get lost, the locals will show you where places are to find out, and that is nice. And that leads us into the next thing that's gonna shock you, and that is the signage here. Look, you'll be amazed how many signs you will see that points to San Marco this way, 
and this way. Or you wanna go to Ferrovia, the state train station, it is this way and that way. And they have all these signs all over the place that don't exactly always help you. Um, so it is kind of shocking when you're like going, well, how do I get there? They both go that way? I guess which way is best? I don't know. Um, that is kind of shocking for some people. So they're like, I, I don't get the signage. The signage can be kind of confusing here, but it's funny once you've been here enough times, you get a rough idea of how I want to go, which way is the best way to walk, things like that. Now, the sixth thing I have for you is the fact that if you come here in certain times of the year, the water levels, because Venice is sinking. I mean, it's shocking how much it's sinking and all those tourists aren't helping it sink less. And so what you have is it actually will flood to the point that the roads and the streets are covered and you'll walk on risers. I've had to do that a couple times when I've been here and it's kind of shocking. Like, am I going to be safe walking on these risers? Yes, you will. And the thing is, the water goes back down later in the day and so they move the risers off and so you'll be fine. But don't be shocked if you come at certain times of the year and you're like, wait, everything's flooded. Yes, it is, but you can still walk. It's okay on the on the scaffolding, all right? The seventh thing that might shock you is you might have noticed all these boats going by and things like that, is here in Venice, there's no buses. Our boats are our buses, the Vaporettos that are out there. So you see like there's a boat carrying people around there that go around the Vaporettos. You will be taking boats to get places. And what shocks some of the tourists about that is that sometimes there's two lines, one for locals and one for tourists because remember 20 million tourists versus 50,000 people i've got to get to work by nine o'clock and i've got six bus loads or boat loads uh, of tourists waiting to get on the bus well help me out here and so they do have other lines for the locals sometimes and also other prices so don't be upset by it just realize that they have to go to work and you're just going to enjoy this beautiful city walking around seeing the canals and the rialto and san marco and they're going to be at a desk working so Give them a little break there, but realize our buses here are boats. <laughs> and yes, there might be two lines where they separate the tourists from the locals. The eighth thing that might shock you to come here is you do have to pay for the public toilets. There are public toilets around the city and you pay two euros to use them. So make sure you carry some coins around. If you don't want to pay for the toilets, you got to go to a cafe or restaurant and buy something anyway to use those toilets. So it might be you're like, I'm a little thirsty. Well, go grab a cafe, go grab a coffee, go grab an espresso, go grab, you know, a, a, a gelato or whatever and use the bathrooms there. But just do know that it is two euros at least to go use the public toilets when you are here. Now, the ninth thing that I've seen shock some tourists when they come here is when you're going into Basilica San Marco, it is one of the most gorgeous churches in the world. You have to go in there, but they have a sign that says, look, if you have short shorts on or you know sleeveless shirts, they're not gonna let you in. And I've actually seen tourists denied entry because they were wearing skimpy clothes. So don't be shocked if they don't let you in if you're you know not dressed very nice. Now, I'm not saying you gotta wear a suit, but it has to be somewhat respectable, you know, to get in so just be careful with that one all right and the 10th thing that might shock when you come here to venice is venice it's not just these little islands right here there's more to venice than just the piazza san marco and the grand canal and things like that there's other islands around here you can go to burano you can go to murano and see where they make the glass and go over there there's some nice churches and stuff like that you want to go to the beach yes you can go to the beach in venice you go if you go to the palestrina island there's actually a sandy beach that you can go to and if you go there in the summer it's literally you and the venetian that are there because the tourists you don't see the German tourists the Swedish tourists there you just see the locals there and that is really cool so those are just 10 little things that might shock tourists when they do come here overall this city is amazing from the architecture and the churches and the, the canals and the gondolas and all this kind of stuff I mean some people say Venice is overrated and I say that's BS this place is amazing so I do hope you come we have more videos five things you love and hate about visiting here tips for visiting Venice, what you don't do when you're here in Venice, for Italy as well, all on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, obviously YouTube, and we really appreciate your likes and subscriptions. And if you like travel videos like this and other things like this, click that subscribe button. And we usually put out two or three travel videos every single week from all over the world. So go click that like button, okay, and the subscribe button to help us out. And I'll say ciao de Venezia. Bye from Venice. Oh, and if you can come during Carnival when they have all the masks on, man, you'll be shocked how cool that is, all right? So, <laughs> bye from Venice.